This story is brought to your ears by all our fantastic supporters on Patreon. To get in on the action yourself with bloopers, extras, and the occasional early story, join us at patreon.com slash voiceofallmtg. We'd like to thank our newest patrons, Leon Giron, Sir Barasta, John J. Mendez, and Sarah Scogans for already donating. For more stories, or just to chat, visit voiceofallmtg.com. And now, Voice of All presents... Tessa Karlov, A Story of Dragon's Maze, by Adam Lee. They've ruled a fourth far too long. Tessa sat in her favorite chair, made from Utvar and Ebony, and let the blasphemous thoughts dwell in her mind for a while. She savored the feeling that it generated within her, a thrilling blend of sacrilege and freedom. Certainly, there was danger ahead of her. The Obzadot had given her the title of Grand Envoy, but Tessa knew it was so they could keep closer tabs on her, constantly testing her loyalty and keeping her busy with endless official business. Tessa was no stranger to the game, and she knew she could only gain so much influence on the side of the living before feeling the phantom strings of the Obzadot pulling her into their domain. And Tessa had been steadily increasing in power. She had felt their strings pulling for quite some time. She'd had enough of these dead old men. The generational manifesto for the Orzhov's future sat on her desk. The ancient tome had not gathered a mote of dust since her days as a young advocist. Tessa had read it from cover to cover several times, but this last time, she did so from a different context. The words took on a whole new meaning. Tessa's eyes were opened. No longer was she that ambitious young advocate who entered a ruthless world of power and lies. Lately, Tessa began to see herself as a stand-in for something new within the Orzhov that had instilled her mind with deep conviction and ideas. She wanted to gut the Orzhov guild and reshape it into a new kind of power that Ravnica had never seen. She picked up the heavy book and opened it to the most recent quote that rung in her head. Freedom from the mortal connection to crude coinage and simple riches allows the members of the Obzadot to pursue true and holy power, unshackled by worldly concerns. So why do they still pursue the coin with as much fervor as ever? Signed Anonymous. Simple but audacious words that eventually led to Anonymous being hunted down and put to death. No one outside the Orzhov elite knew the full story, but those within the Orzhov families knew Anonymous was an aristocrat named Tehana Jarek. Jarek was known within the Orzhov elite for speaking out against the Obsidat. At first, it was considered an eccentricity of Jarek's Orzhovan blood, and her family name kept her safe until she began publishing essays critical of the Ghost Council. Those essays, and her refusal to desist, led to her arrest, trial, and public disintegration in the Forum of Orzhova. Tessa had spent a small fortune in coin and favors to a trusted Demir contact to secretly procure the rare and incendiary writings of Jarek. They were in Tessa's collection, but hidden far away, under lock and key and several high-powered magical wards. To possess Jarek's words was to be guilty of the same crimes Jarek was put to death for. But Tessa had stopped giving a damn about what the Obzadot could do to her, and had started to focus her formidable mind on what she could do to them. The Maze a few days earlier, the Obzadot had used a death pact to deliver the message. A terrified scribe blurted out the message to Tessa within the confines of a verity circle. Tessa listened with the intensity of a cat watching a mouse hole. 
The maze started off as a passing interest for the Orzhov. Another strange is it obsession to be monitored, but not taken too seriously. Tessa could feel this new information shifting the game. The maze had become vastly more important, and that was something the Obzadot had no plan for. And she knew it. The Obzadot's greatest weakness was that it was composed of spirits playing a corporeal game. They needed someone on the other side of the veil they could trust with matters of great importance. Up until then, Tessa had been their reluctant answer. She could feel their frustration of having to divulge their urgency to Tessa with this task of running the maze and finding out its ancient secret. Would it be unbridled power? Would it be a vast fortune? Would it grant rulership over Ravnica? Tessa knew the Obzadot was truly worried about what could happen. The maze was out of its control, and the clock was ticking. Tessa was its best bet at solving the maze. Now she had the upper hand. She had something the Council wanted. As she looked out from her balcony, she couldn't contain the smirk from the sheer delight of it all. Slubnik. Her thrall wheezed over and bowed before Tessa. Send a messenger and bring Master Tajik of the Boros to my study. Tajik sat in Tessa's study. The sound of Tessa's cane on the tile floor heralded her arrival. As she walked in, the Boros knight stood and smiled. His white teeth seemed somehow feral against his olive skin and black goatee. He offered his arm and aided Tessa to her chair. His arm felt like coiled steel. Tessa could tell his eyes took in every detail of his surroundings. She could sense Tajik's intellect, but she could also sense how he radiated danger. Even though Tessa was anything but a warrior, she supposed Tajik could tear apart the guards that stood outside her door and everyone else within her mansion, if he chose. Tessa motioned for Tajik to sit. I'll get right to the point. I know you to be a man of your word, Tajik, and unquestionable integrity is something that I value above all things, coin, land, or even power. We both know that integrity is power, and that which has no integrity has no power. Tajik's eyes sparkled. He liked this Orzhov aristocrat. She was a fighter and a visionary. You have always been a friend to the Borosh, Tessa Karlov, even when our guildmasters have not seen eye to eye. His accent was thick, and he spoke it with an assurance which no doubt, had irked his elocutionist in the Boros Academy. Your efforts in curing the Kugamot, restoring the Udvara, defeating Zomash Hauk, creating a new guild pact, all these actions speak to your character. I know Ravnica is not just a commodity to you. I'm glad you see me without the usual cynicism. Tessa sipped her tea. Most do not afford me this simple capacity of what it is to be human let alone consider that I actually care about the well-being of our city without thought of profit. Tessa looked over the rim of her cup. Tajik leaned forward in his chair. I knew that you appreciated the law and what it means for Ravnica. That is why I accepted your invitation to talk today. He leaned back. I have to be honest with you, Tessa Karlov. I have always admired your courage from afar, but now that I am in your presence... I can sense what makes you a great leader. Tajik said the words with no hint of subterfuge or guile. Tessa felt a slight blush come to her cheeks. She took a self-conscious sip of tea. You do me honor, sir. I know what inspires people. There was a long pause. The two sat in silence, sipping tea. Tajik with a sphinx-like expression that betrayed no emotion, and Tessa feeling this was the oddest Boros commander she had ever encountered. He was perfect for the task. This was the man who would help her achieve her goal. 
Tessa took a breath, the kind of breath one takes before opening a door from which there is no return. I would like to form an alliance with you. A special kind of alliance that requires absolute commitment and dedication. Tajik smiled, as if expecting Tessa's request all along. You want me to help you run the maze and steal the prize from the insatiable claws of niv -Mizet. My pleasure. No. I want you to help me destroy the Obsidat. Thank you for listening to this production of Voice of All. As listener-supported entertainment, we rely on you not just for the voices of the characters, but also to keep us going and growing. If you enjoyed what you heard, please support us by rating and reviewing us on iTunes, or following us on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts, or just plain sharing with your friends. You can also support us financially on Patreon for exclusive perks. Tasa Karlov was written by Adam Lee. And the podcast was produced and edited by Gen Dolkeshi. This week's story featured the voice talents of Melissa Sheldon and David Moscovich. Voice of All is unofficial fan content, permitted under the Wizards of the Coast fan content policy. Met to the Gathering is copyright, Wizards of the Coast. Thanks so much for listening. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>